right, we got a neat episode for you today. We have Sean Casey from DNA Firearms with us. What's up, guys? Howdy, Sean. Nice How to you? meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And good to see you again. You, yeah. were, you rode here with me, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to cover today, um, we're going to pick Sean's brain on some firearm stuff. Uh, he's going to explain what goes into building the custom guns he does. And then just kind of in general, um, I want to pick your brain a little bit on uh, calibers, you know, choices for predator hunting, then get into a little bit of like on factory guns, and then custom guns. Okay. So first... Uh, can you kind of tell everybody a little bit of background about you and how you, how you got into this? Background? Well, guys, I'm, I'm just like every one of y'all. Uh, I love chasing the dogs. Started off as a deer hunter, probably like most of everyone out there in the predator hunting industry now. Um, eat, breathe, and sleep the archery, uh, rifles, deer hunting, anything in general. A lot of hog hunting. Used to run a lot of hog dogs. I mean, I loved it. Down in the swamps seven nights a week. Uh, Got introduced to uh, one, definitely one of my best friends now. Uh, he actually did a podcast with him, John Alden. Yep. Um, I kind of got to know him um, through some long range stuff that we were testing with rifles. And uh, he's the one who really introduced me into predator hunting. Um, and yeah, it only took two times and I had thermals on my leg. <laughs> Just like, right. you guys know what I'm saying, you know. Uh, um, we're not out there at two, three in the morning, coyote hunting to not be successful. Right. I could be huddled up next to my wife, staying warm. Yeah. Maybe even get a little <laughs> tension. But um, you know, I'm a. Uh, if I'm going to be out there in the middle of the field at night, competing in tournaments, whatever it be, I'm going to take things seriously, and I'm gonna push things as far as I can to be for ultimate success, just like you guys. So, um, that's pretty much my history. Uh, as far as this, the precision end of things and and how we got to where we deliver the products that we do, um, a lot of you guys have probably heard me say the name Paul Paul. Um, this guy, he's like my dad. His name's Mark. Um, he's a bench rest shooter. A little bit different. He, I've taken him coyote hunting a few times. Uh, he enjoys it, but it's not really his thing. Um, he's all about knocking the wings off a flea at a thousand yards you know yeah um precision shoot he's been an excellent mentor in teaching me and advising me on things that we need to change or do to deliver the most accurate precise and reliable equipment that we can possibly offer you guys what do we got here this right here um so we're getting very involved in our bolt gun offerings as you guys can see um if you've been following anything from us um, we've been very focused on bolt action rifles. Gas guns, we've been, we're pretty well known for, especially in the predator hunting industry. And that, that reputation is going to stick and we're going to continue to deliver that. But we're really pushing bolt guns at this time too. Um, a lot of you guys are after ultra lightweight setups that deliver higher velocities um, that are desired for predator hunting. And obviously we've got NRL hunter PRS style rifles too for competition, but um, obviously we're here to talk about predator hunting. So the idea or the mentality behind a setup like this is this: tournament hunters or PRS long range guys that are involved or interested in predator hunting that are familiar with uh, ballistics, dialing dope and accounting for long range shots accurately, the bolt gun in this format is kind of where we're, where our desired our focus, focus is, is mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, you're always gonna be able to get more accuracy out of a bolt gun versus a gas gun. And here's why, you've got pressure behind a projectile in one direction, that's it. You got pressure behind a projectile that also requires pressure for the rifle to function. So, yeah. so, you know, there's a lot more going on in this system that's going to affect long range accuracy than what you can get out of this, where it's more consistent, the bolt's locked until you manually cycle it. Um, so this system right here is designed for long range predator hunting. What you can expect with a custom rifle is 
a man sitting there to help explain this to you, right. inform you, and kind of guide you in the right direction. We're going to make sure that all the mathematical calculations and the physics is involved in, to give you the ultimate piece that you need right. to know. Well, that's what <clears throat> kind of leads me to my next question is, is, can you go over what all you consider from the customer and from a builder standpoint in a custom rifle? Because I tell people the quick story with with my rifle. Of, I ran a Ruger Precision rifle for a long time. <clears throat> I liked it, mm -hmm. killed hundreds of coyotes with it, um, and I just wanted to step up a little bit, and um, I wanted a DNA rifle. And DNA firearms supports, like you, you guys have kind of really got into the niche of predator hunting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you guys are always sponsoring the tournaments and, you know, all that stuff. So I knew I wanted a DNA gun. And I didn't really realize, like when I ordered it, I thought I was getting like a showpiece. Like I was going to go out and shoot it, but it wasn't going to be my main gun. Like I was still going to use my RPR. Because I throw it in the back of my truck. You know, I was like, if I'm, you know, getting this caliber gun, I'm not, or this nice of a gun, it's not going to be my daily thing. Sean said, once you shoot it, it'll be your daily gun. Oh, yeah. And sure enough, I have have not pulled my old gun out of my safe since. They're, so, they're pretty, but they're tools. Yeah, but I didn't realize, I guess my point is you don't know what you don't know. Like, I didn't realize how much more accurate, smoother action, better shooting, right. more consistent grouping. Like, I didn't realize all those things would, I would get the benefit of that with a custom gun. And the crisp triggers. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, the trigger system from right. a custom gun to a factory gun is going to be day and night right. in yeah. comparison. Absolutely. There, there's a lot that gets involved in a, in a custom rifle, okay? So a factory rifle, car, as I call a cardboard box gun, there's a reason why that price point is where it's at. And there's a reason why there's a price point behind this. And it comes into time, but there's also some fees and taxes and stuff that these larger companies have got to account for that where we don't do that sort of volume, we don't have to be too concerned about it at times, you know. Um, but with that being said, when it comes into the overall perspective of why a factory rifle costs what it costs, well, it's, it's mass manufacturing. There's nowhere near the time and attention to detail per every rifle um, as there is in this. Uh, so like just say this bolt gun when we chamber we are running it through like we're we're indicating off the chamber side the muzzle side back to the chamber side then we're going off the rifle we're ensuring that that chamber is 100 percent within two to three tenths of a thousandth that chamber is perfectly centered to the rifle you know it's little things and attention to detail like that that's going to deliver that performance that you're seeking and that's what you're paying for um, the trigger groups, you know, and so forth, these are high quality trigger groups. Um, they're fully adjustable usually. We only use trigger tech triggers 99% of the time unless a customer so exclusively. Those are adjustable, the customer can yep. adjust the yep. poundage. Fully adjustable, yes. Yep. Um, and it's simple to do. Uh, we provide instructions and the tooling to do so. Um, gas blocks are fully tunable on the gas guns. You know, there's a lot of service. This is the highest end of components that we could stick in one package. This is what I'm going to personally run in the field. And you guys know, it, I'm going to expect the best, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so when a customer comes in and says, I think I want a custom gun. Mm -hmm. Let's say they want a custom bolt gun. What are the things that they should consider, like price-wise, component-wise? I mean, you have full variables yeah. I, when you, I remember when you spec'd out mine, you said what barrel length you want, what twist, like I could yeah. pick every single yeah. piece of what you build. Right. But if it's somebody that's newer and doesn't know, you can guide them through, right. like if you know probably what their ranges are, like what they're hunting, um, distance, -wise, stuff like that, you can get a little bit of information and kind of help somebody with yeah. this, right? Yeah, so the, the first thing that I'm typically going to ask and the, and the first step in building a rifle is not the rifle at all. It is, what animal are you trying to hunt with it? What specific projectile you're wanting to shoot? And what kind of, how you want that projectile to react when it hits that specific animal you want to hunt? Oh. So I'm coyote hunting. 
and I want to shoot this six millimeter 70 grain bullet and I need to go this fast so that it fragments upon just say two inches of penetration into this coyote. You know, that's going to determine a lot of things. First off, you know, we're going to start with once again, six millimeter, 70 grain. So we know we need a six millimeter blank. That's where we're going to start. We need to go this fast to make that projectile fragment. That's going to be your chamber, six millimeter creep more, six millimeter arc, six millimeter PRC. Um, you know, there's thousands of offerings. I'm there to help you for that. Okay. Um, once you decide all that, now you've got, you know, your velocity is also obviously going to be affected by your barrel length. And once you put those couple variables together, that's how you start to build your rifle. You know what caliber, twist rate, what length of barrel you're going to need. Well, this guy does want to compact, so we need to kind of stay around this area, make sure it fits all those specs that he offered, that he demands, and then you can start building from there. Um, budgets, you know, unfortunately in this day <laughs> budget and custom don't go in the same sentence parts are going up you know everything is suffering from serious inflation right now um and it's changing every month you know those are those we're seeing inflation across the board you know we we have to be able to account for that inflation too or that's how you go under um so so I can't really tell you, hey, they started this or that, you know, because it changes. But today, you know, typically your custom rifles, a bolt gun that we're going to offer, you know, we got components that we put out there for you. I scratch a line, I'm not going under that because I'm not putting my reputation, I'm not going to risk that. Right. You know, this is where we're at. And, you know, typically you're going to spend 3000 and up, whether it's bolt gun or AR. And 3000 that's skimping some, you know, but we know that you're going to get the performance that you can expect for that, you know. Right. Yep. If you're able to hand load, first off, you're going to learn, you're going to learn really quick the differences in a custom built rifle versus a box gun when you start hand loading. Because you can, you'll be able to see changes in dimensions and numbers and stuff that, you know, are variable or, or that's a little bit out of tolerance here and there that, you would never know if you if you didn't hand load. Um, and when you hand load, that's the thing about being a custom builder, is that most of my reamers and stuff, when I chamber a barrel, we've got reamers that are custom designed and we're able to tweak and change things specific to what someone's looking to do with that rifle. But they have to be able to also hand load that projectile to fit that specific that setup, yeah, design, you know, like a lot of guys, they're shooting the 243, they're wanting to run the 58 to 70 grain projectiles, and just say the 243's got a free board, just say 100 thousandths, you know. Well, our custom reamer, we got reamers that are set with a shorter throat. That way, they don't have to have such a long jump of that projectile to the lands and so forth. The lands being the rifle, yeah. you know, um, we can tweak things and get it more designed around exactly what you're trying to do with it. And that goes for, like I said, long range shooting or anything. It all starts with one thing, the projectile. Once you get the projectile and a little bit of information, that's where we come into Build play the gun and we help you design what you're trying to do. You know, this isn't about just, you know, making it work. This is, we're seeking optimal results, you know. If you're going to put in the time effort and seriousness about calling coyotes and, and predator hunting it's certainly mm. an investment well worth it definitely yeah and it's one of those things too of you know we always say jd and I always say like you can't kill coyotes if they're not there from a calling aspect but then once the coyotes come in you've put in all this work of purchasing you know thermal you know all your equipment and everything and you've scouted your ground, you've done all this work, the very last thing is pulling the trigger. And our part of our our push behind this is is for people to consider if you know the resources are available to consider a custom gun. Because I know my numbers jumped up when I went to a DNA rifle and just when I went to being more more uh, close tolerances, my grouping, everything was just better with a better gun. And I didn't know it until I tried it. So I, I guess just, you know, you put in all this work, 
this is like the last phase, the last key to putting the dead dog in the back of your truck. Yeah, what was that shot in Illinois the other night? Four what? 400? Four, yeah, 435, I think it was. 35. And with my old gun, uh, a 400 yard shot would have, I would have been happy with. Now it's kind of this, um, it's kind of standard. Like I, I didn't hesitate at taking it. Right. Like I mean, I got, I got yeah, this. 430 yards <laughs> is no problem. I, I'm running a good quality rifle and I know exactly where my bullet's going to go. Yeah. Um, we have an episode out on, you know, zeroing your rifle and we kind of changed I, JD and I both kind of changed concepts on zeroing. We used to run a specific zero and specific dope after that. And then we kind of changed to this, um, Too dope. Yeah, kill box oh, type thing where within a four inch square, we're going to have, you know, above and below um, tolerances. And it kind of changed the way I was shooting and zeroed things and, and it worked. But it wouldn't work if I didn't have a rifle that I could put really small numbers in a small kill box into that app that creates all my dope. So. I guess my point with all that was is the last key of putting all this together, I think is a good quality rifle. So that's why we wanted to bring you this information that this is available. Um, and I'm sure Sean, people can call, contact you on social media, oh, yeah. and call yeah. however, you'll walk people through. Yeah. Cause I didn't know enough about guns to, still don't, but didn't know enough about guns. I didn't know what I wanted when I got mine. And there was a lot of back and forth with Sean on the phone of me explaining what I do and what it's like up here. And, um, there was a lot of back and forth and I just trusted him to kind of go with with what he suggested and I couldn't be happier with what I got. I appreciate that. You can email us at sales at DNA firearm, that's singular, systems, that's plural, dot com. Um, you can message us on Facebook or you can text me or call me at 937-207-2025. Well, I appreciate Guys, I appreciate you uh, yeah. inviting me over. Willing to shoot the video. Yeah. Nice to shoot you again. Yep. Famous JD. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> See you again. Yeah. Glad you're enjoying your rifle. I am. And uh, JD couldn't be happier. When 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 we gonna when, I, huh? when, when are we gonna do this? We're gonna do it as soon as this camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, guys. All right. Thanks, guys.